is Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. Hello and welcome to Your Health. I'm Barry Morgan. There's a vitamin generating a lot of questions from the public. It's also the subject of a lot of scrutiny by scientific researchers. We are talking about vitamin D. And to help answer these questions and unravel what science is telling us about vitamin D, we welcome Dr. Brent Richards, endocrinologist at the Jewish General Hospital, member facility of CUS West Central Montreal, and a researcher at the hospital's Lady Davis Institute. First of all, doctor, thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me. So what role does vitamin D actually play in our bodies? Yeah, so that's something that um, we're still trying to figure out. In fact, so uh, we know that vitamin D plays an integral role in protecting our bones, but it's interesting. You would think then that if you had normal levels of vitamin D, that taking even more vitamin D would protect your bones even further. Sure. But it turns out that might not be true. What we do know about vitamin D is that if you have really low levels of vitamin D, that this can have catastrophic effects on your skeleton, can make your skeleton very weak and prone to fracture. But it's important for everyone to keep in mind that um, just because something is good for you, taking even more of it might not make it better. Too much of a good thing. Yeah. Not necessarily that good. Where do we get uh, vitamin D from, doctor? Like, What are the actual sources? Yeah, so uh, vitamin D is actually pretty cool because it comes from sunlight um, to some degree. So um, that means that when we go outside um, and we even expose our hands or our face to the sun, uh, we get a fair bit of vitamin D. If you take off your shirt and run around on the beach or go for a swim in a pool, you'll get a lot of vitamin D. But for those of us who live in northern climates, such as here in Montreal, um, that doesn't happen particularly a lot in the winter. And mm-hmm. so we rely upon food sources of vitamin D. So that's fatty fish that we take. A lot of milk products, uh, yogurts contain vitamin D that are often supplemented. Sometimes orange juice does. And then a lot of people, in fact, uh, about um, over a third of the population over the age of 75 takes vitamin D tablets every day. Year-round or? Yeah, well, year-round, mm-hmm. uh, according to some of the nutritional surveys that have uh, taken place in North America recently. Do we actually need to take the supplements, you think? I don't I think mean, so. Are they essential? I don't no. think that so many of us need to take so much vitamin D. Um, so we have very little evidence that taking even more vitamin D when your vitamin D levels are normal is going to help you in any regard. Um, And so uh, I think that for people who have quite low levels of vitamin D or actually labeled as vitamin D deficient are benefited by taking vitamin D. But for those of us in the general population who have normal levels of vitamin D, um, we and others have generated increasingly strong evidence that for most outcomes, um, vitamin D is not that helpful. There's one glaring exception, and that is multiple sclerosis. Okay. So We've known for a very long time that in people living in northern climates, uh, such as northern Europe, as well as Canada, are predisposed to uh, multiple sclerosis. And in, interestingly, when we take people from warm climates and we migrate them to Canada, um, they tend to get more multiple sclerosis. We take people from populations where uh, there really isn't any multiple sclerosis, such as in northern Africa. Um, And we take them particularly if people are are wearing um, clothing to cover their skin for religious reasons. We park them in Montreal for uh, their life. They get much higher rates of multiple sclerosis than uh, they would if they were in northern Africa. Why is this happening? We don't really know. But we do know that if you have low levels of vitamin D, even at birth, that you're at much higher risk of getting multiple sclerosis later in your life. We know that if you are genetically predisposed to having low vitamin D levels, that you're at a much higher risk of getting multiple sclerosis later in life. And so it will be very hard for us to do a randomized controlled trial, which would be our gold standard of evidence to understand whether or not um, vitamin D can protect us from getting multiple sclerosis. But we have increasingly clear evidence that people with low vitamin D levels are at an increased risk for what is a really serious disease, multiple sclerosis. There are studies out there that say it might be uh, higher rates of cancer potentially yeah, at least? Yeah, so, so it's a great question. So so one of the problems about setting vitamin D is it's a marker of a lot of other things. So people who tend to have high levels of vitamin D are people who tend to be really healthy. They're thin, they don't smoke, they um, actively engage in physical exercise. And so when you're measuring vitamin D and you're seeing that people with low vitamin D levels have a, a higher risk of cancer, what you actually might be capturing is people who just have poor lifestyles. I see. And so it's really, you have to be really careful when interpreting that evidence. If you are deficient, if the levels are low, then you probably should be treated. But if your levels are normal, popping vitamin D levels with the attempt to prevent cancer, uh, we'd really 
really don't have very much evidence to support that. Okay. And we do know that people who are genetically predisposed to low vitamin D levels, which is not associated with being obese or smoking or not exercising, that just that one risk factor doesn't influence your risk of cancer in most cases. But does the, the vitamin actually protect us from cancer if you're at the right level? So we don't know that. And most of the evidence that we have, which is strongest in my opinion, uh, suggests that it does not. Hmm. Um, now, whether or not vitamin D can actually help with progression of cancer or limiting its progression once you've already got cancer, we don't know. But um, we do know that um, when we remove the sort of information or the potential bias that can come from measuring vitamin D in the population because we're picking up people who smoke, people who exercise, don't exercise, people who are obese. When we remove that, all of those sort of carry on baggage, uh, we don't see much of an effect of vitamin D on preventing cancer. So in terms of dosage for um, healthy adults, healthy children, would you suggest if, if their levels are where they should be, well, you don't need supplements over the winter? Is you, that So most people actually don't need supplements, and which is, I think, an important message to get out because a lot of people take vitamin D supplements, um, the benefit of which is really not very clear. We just have results from a large-scale randomized controlled trial of people who were given vitamin D uh, tablets daily um, who were followed for um, a fair time on, um, in a very large randomized controlled trial of about over 20,000 people, which showed that giving people vitamin D tablets did not protect them from cancer, nor did it protect them from having heart attacks. And so it's really important that if people feel that they're going to get a tremendous benefit from taking large doses of vitamin D, that they'd be very careful um, because too much of a good thing is just too much of a good thing. So, well, that's just it, right? But I guess it's understandable that people have, they, they read all this literature or they see these, you know, the studies that are published here and there, and it, it could be con confusing for, for people. It general. is, it is. And especially when you, when you start from the psychology of this is coming from the sun. And this is good for you. And it's a vitamin. Yeah. It's hard to constantly remind ourselves that actually too much of a good thing can be just as bad for us as too little. Well, it's like somebody thing. who's on an all fruit diet, for instance. That's well, right. Well, obviously that's not good for you. You need yes. proteins and you need other... Exactly. So that's a very nice analogy. Okay. Yeah. In terms of your research at uh, Lady Davis? Yeah. So what we're interested in is the genetic determinants of vitamin D. Why we're interested in that is because... Genetic determinants? Of vitamin you D. You might have uh, to explain to me what that means. Yeah, so, sure. So we... Um, we all inherit DNA from our parents. Um, that's why some of us look like our parents. We won't blame them for that. But um, <laughs> the, uh, that DNA controls lots of other things in our bodies. One of the things that it partially controls is the level of vitamin D that circulates in your body. So some people have a genetic factors which will drive their vitamin D levels very low. Some people have genetic factors which drive their vitamin D levels very high. Okay. The nice thing about studying those is that once you know what these things are, they're not associated with um, the poor lifestyle effects which influence the relationship between measured vitamin D and these outcomes. So what it allows you to do is capture a way that you can disentangle this problem of vitamin D is actually a measure of health in general. And when you disentangle that, yeah. A lot of the associations between vitamin D and disease outcomes fall apart. So your your outgoing message here, uh, as we as we wrap up, doctor, to the general public would be basically, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if your levels are where they should be, vitamin D wise don't necessarily mess with supplements? Yeah, the one caveat that I would add to that is that people who have a high risk of multiple sclerosis, meaning if you have a mom or a dad or a sibling who has multiple sclerosis, you really got to make sure that your vitamin D levels are normal. Um, and the, that's a guideline statement which has recently been published by the M Society of Canada. And that's really important because Multiple sclerosis is a bad disease, a disease that um, there's increasing evidence can be partially prevented by just making sure your vitamin D levels are normal. Doctor, thank you very, very much for this. Barry, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. That's Dr. Brent Richards, endocrinologist at the Jewish General Hospital member facility of CS West Central Montreal, also a researcher at the hospital's Lady Davis Institute. And that's it for this edition of Your Health. Thank you for your time. To hear our previous programs, you can find them at podcast.cuswest.com centralca That's podcast.ciusswestcentral.ca. Let us know if there's a topic you'd like us to explore in the future. I'm Barry Morgan. Until next time. You've been listening to Your Health. 
a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal.